Okay, hello everybody. My name is Stefan Keller from the University of Applied Science, Rapperswil, and uh, that's on the other end of the Lake of Zurich, Switzerland. And um, I want to talk about areas of interest and, and uh, with uh, some uh, experience report um, of uh, how to handle this um, in, on a big planet scale. The, uh, program uh, or the overview is about this. I want to define what are areas of interest, uh, what's the state of the art, and then I give you a definition how we defined area of, uh, areas of interest. I will then show you the implementation. Many of you are looking forward and how those are processed and then some remarks on further work and uh, finally about uh, what about uh, big spatial data. So first of all I just want to ask uh, everybody who does know areas of interest on Google Maps? So ju just uh, to, to make a proof how are, are they shown on the, on the map, I mean on the mobile, what's the color? Um, they say shaded orange. Then they say it, it's very in the background, and uh, it, 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 um, they, they had a vague definition what it is, but uh, so once again, about, about half a dozen or, or so know this kind of interesting additional information. And um, um, the, there are, in fact, several different uh, notions behind areas of interest. I mean ROE, there is a disambiguation page in Wikipedia, there, there is a Japanese girl group or, or, or something uh, e even, and uh, there are uh, different notions, but uh, in, in computer assisted editing, including humanitarian operations team, they, they define areas of interest, so my first sentence, the, the, the focus area where they um, expect to have buildings or, or, or streets, for example, um, areas where to look at uh, inside the, the tasking manager. This is also kind of uh, area of interest because uh, interest is a broad, broad uh, notion. And um, a, a little bit more focused on the on topic is that uh, in, in tourism, it's uh, shopping, entertainment and cultural areas polygons to help travelers to explore the world. So if you visit first time Milano, uh, Milan, then uh, you would know where, where to go. Um, I mean, uh, um, this, uh, this, this evening, um, after, an, um, as an alternative to the Birrificeria, after the, the beer event, uh, or instead of. So, and so, and so that's what I want to show you. And uh, let's take, uh, in my example, I will take an example of Milano at the quarter, um, a little bit between here and to the west, um, as an example of uh, areas of interest. So this is how Google Maps looks like. It's uh, probably difficult to see from behind because those orange shaded areas are, uh, for example, around here, and, and, and this is more pink. So then this is a building um, uh, as a, a shaded in uh, as area of interest, and this is not uh, an area of interest. And um, so you have to look closer. I mean, perhaps you see it up here uh, at Loreto. And uh, there was a, two years ago a blog post of Google the uh, technology team, maps team, they defined it uh, simply as the places where there are, there's a lot of activities, human activities, and um, uh, so areas with the highest concentration of restaurants, bars, and shops. Um, th that's uh, uh, some small citation out of their blog post. And uh, in addition, they, uh, they reported that in high density areas like New York City, um, we are using a human touch. And so, sounds good in my uh, English, non English ears. They, they, they have some human intervention. And that was an, on this blog post the, those shaded orange areas. And uh, it, it's a single category um, comprising all touristic activities. Um, which is something I want to differentiate uh, quite uh, in the next slide. 
and they are most probably using uh, user tracks, I mean GPS um, um, tracks from their um, um, mobile um, applications, Android phones, where they also derive information like opening hours, when are people entering a building and, uh, and things like this. So uh, most probably and uh, for sh al almost for sure they are using also this kind of human activities in addition to uh, indicate if there is an um, area of interest. Note also that there are two kinds of uh, visualizations in Google Maps. One is uh, building based, I mean once a building uh, contains a shop or something, the whole building is shaded and uh, that's a uh, building level, uh, how I call it, and when you zoom out to zoom level around 14, it gets some kind of uh, aerial um, visualization, polygonal uh, polygons, which is uh, the kind of areas I'm looking for. So um, I'm looking at this aerial um, visualizations. Uh, recently we, find out, we found out that there is a startup, a nice startup from, from Spain, from Catalonia, called avuxi.com. They make a living of selling um, areas of interest differentiated um, between four or five categories. Um, they defined as shopping, sightseeing, eating, uh, night and nightlife. And they have a uh, few products around this that they sell to touristic uh, organizations. So um, they um, also did not tell the, um, exactly how they derive it. That's part of the startup uh, um, secret. And, uh, but they say they are collecting uh, dozens of uh, open data sources, like uh, um, most probably Flickr photos and, uh, and other in information, um, instead of uh, human activity based on user tracks like Google does. They have a heat map and they also have a polygon um, data set, uh, which they sell to the um, touristic uh, users. So that's the same area, all, all more or less, where, where we are here, Chita Studi, and uh, where there is obviously some um, commercial area um, in this, in, in this uh, region. And uh, this differs from, uh, from category to category um, as they differentiate. And so it, um, here it is shown the, um, the, shopping, the shopping area, which comes close to the Google definition and my own. Um, that's the other product from Avuxi. They have, in addition, parks and waterfront as a separate category. And uh, it, it looks also very similar. Um, so obviously, there, there are those uh, commercial areas according to their um, demo page, which is online. Finally, there is also Open Trip Map, um, which show um, shopping um, uh, point of interest, so, sorry, um, but only on a point, so a, a point level. Um, I mean only, uh, that's on a point level, that's not the thing I'm, I'm looking after. I'm, I'm just mentioning it as uh, to, to be complete, more or less. So um, my or our definition of area's interest is uh, it's um, an urban area at city or neighborhood level with a high concentration of point of interest and typically located along a street of high spatial importance. So you see that I wanted to have something like a street uh, uh, notion in it and not only some, some kind of uh, point of interest concentration. Con concentration. Um, we focus as, uh, on neighborhood level, not building level, as I said before, and we are also just uh, aggregating all categories and putting all into one, not yet differentiating between uh, some categories which are difficult to to define uh, anyhow. So uh, what's the difference between uh, eating and shopping and, 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 and things like this? And so uh, it's only one category to make it simple. It's based purely on OpenStreetMap data and uh, it should be open documented. 
and it should be reproducible, and that's what I show you now. The implementation um, was part of a master's thesis of a computer science student um, um, who finished recently, and um, it was th the goal was to explore the areas of, of interest based of, on open source software, um, databases, or Python, and other tools if needed. So the first, the, the overview of the processing steps are like this. Get the, uh, in five, there are five steps. Um, step one, filter the point of interest out of OpenStreetMap containing a selected list of tags. Cluster those points into polygons with a clustering algorithm. Third, create um, hulls, a concave concave hulls around uh, those clusters and then fourth apply network centrality a linear notion to this kind of hull um, so based on the uh, convex hull that there's a polygon center and, and from this center we retrieved the street network data the pedestrian street network and uh, calculated a so-called network centrality algorithm and extended um, and, and buffered um, uh, these convex hulls, these hulls, um, uh, if needed, in order to somehow connect uh, um, nearby clusters. And finally, um, there is some cleanup like waterways and uh, sanitizing. So, and, and, and that's the whole uh, current uh, implementation. So, to visualize the, those five steps, once again, based on uh, Milano, uh, this uh, region, these are the buildings containing the boys. So, of course, I not only are taking notes, but uh, um, either there is a building with a, with a, with a shop tag or uh, some museum or, 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 or uh, uh, and other facilities, um, or, the, or there is a point inside um, a building, so uh, the building is shown as an area of interest in the, um, in the first step. Then those buildings are, um, mm, um, are clustered. So one second. Um, oh, these are the, uh, uh, an, an, uh, an extract of the tags we are using from OpenStreetMap, just to be complete. So to give you an, an, an idea which tags we filtered, we uh, retrieved. Then the uh, second step is um, there, are, um, there is a convex hull building uh, algorithm around, around those polygons. And, um, and for this, we used uh, PostJS uh, DB scan algorithm, a well known algorithm to cluster um, polygons. And, uh, and, and, and this clustering defines uh, some uh, common areas. And around those areas which belong together, I mean those polygons which belong together, define an area. And around this area, uh, convex uh, or concave hull is being calculated, which uh, looks uh, like this. That's the third step. And the fourth step, then the linear uh, notion comes in. Um, uh, you see in red uh, um, the buffers and you see in blue the street network uh, and the centrality algorithm um, defined important streets along uh, and inside uh, those uh, polygons and uh, we allowed to buffer about 50 meters um, to be outside the, those, uh, those uh, hulls um, and finally uh, we exclude water areas uh, where there are no water areas in Milano, obviously. So I show you uh, an, an, the example of Zurich, where, where there, the city of Zurich, where there is a, sea, a lake and, and, and uh, a river. So we excluded uh, and these areas from the areas of interest um, and, and sanitized the whole thing, uh, which then looks like this for, um, uh, for Milano. And finally, um, the result now um, visualized in orange looks like this. So that's the, the, the result. And there is a um, homepage showing that kind, which I just quickly show, we show you. One, one second.
Um, the, here I entered the coordinates of the area of uh, around uh, where we are. And uh, in this demonstration page, you, you see the, uh, these steps explained um, and, uh, one by one, um, which I explained just before, um, which will end up finally to these areas of interest um, similar, similar to the example shown before. That's just uh, a demonstration page just uh, as um, uh, uh, to explain what, what really happens to those who are interested. And um, the evalu evaluation showed that the, uh, that the results are quite interesting. I mean, comparable, more or less, to, uh, to, to this, uh, what Google shows. So, for example, there was a blog post uh, from, uh, before by Justin uh, about Google Maps mode and how far ahead it is and that he said it's not only um, um, enough to collect data, it's, own, it's also needed to analyze it. And here it is. We also analyzed OpenStreetMap data and made areas of interest out, out of it. And um, it, it looks um, quite interesting and, and quite similar. And further work is that, uh, um, for example, Jerry Clough, um, alias SQ53, uh, Sorry, uh, 53. Um, he, want, uh, he used it uh, to identify completeness as compared to uh, the history in this area of interest. So and then, and, um, he's interested in this kind of further use of this, uh, of this data. And we are still at, uh, um, enhancing the parameters because even in rural areas, in, 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 in uh, touristic areas of Switzerland, we, we think it could be better. And uh, of course, we could uh, also use more input data like coordinates of uh, pictures. It's implemented in Python using uh, Postgres database. And the slower part is the OSMNX, uh, which implemented the network centrality, which is uh, unfortunately not available in Post, uh, PostJS, but could be done. Um, that's the slowest part. It's 10 times slower than the older, all, the, all the other uh, calculations, at least. So, and then um, there is a Jupyter, Jupyter, Jupyter um, a notebook, which is a publishing format, which very um, much looks like the visualization demo page I showed you before. But there you could adapt parameters on yourself, and everything is deployed as a Docker to be uh, to be uh, installed um, in an easy way on your own. So the resources you can memorize. Uh, which I also I published uh, the slides. Of course, there is this uh, uh, demo page, which I don't want to uh, broadcast too much. It's on a small computer, and uh, but I can uh, give you access uh, to this uh, hidden URL, and which is there in in the public. In fact, there is uh, there will be open source end of the month when when the student is back from his uh, well-deserved holidays. And uh, there is this master's thesis to be pub published soon. And uh, as, as, as a plus, I registered first time in my life a digital object identifier, an eternal, uh, an eternal web resource URL, similar to ISBN for books, uh, to be referred in scientific papers. It's a, it's a DOI at this data publishing um, uh, repository. Um, and, um, now, just a few words. I skipped those uh, slides. We repeated the same. We already did uh, in PostGIS and vi with Python. We uh, um, uh, repeat the same by evaluating um, one of these um, Apache Spark projects, which do parallelization and scale. Um, to be and, and to able to uh, calculate the whole thing of, of, of the whole planet in a few minutes. And um, we did not fin finish this work because we would, uh, we, we would have had more time to implement dbscan and the network centrality algorithm, which is not available in, in inside those uh, um, uh, packages. And that's the short message about the, the, the real paralyzed big data. The message is 
I skipped this one. Lessons learned are the um, available tools with Postgres are rock solid. Uh, it allowed us to use uh, sophisticated uh, um, functions like dbscan, for example, or stunion and things like this. The approach is still very young uh, to paralyze the whole stuff, um, but it's much more um, expensive and time consuming to implement the, that kind of uh, um, scaled up uh, uh, infrastructure. So. I'm coming, I'm just, um, I'm, I'm fast on this. I know um, we, uh, we didn't finish this implementation, but it was interesting for us to evaluate uh, alternative to PostGIS, and we did not find any, at least not. Uh, so we are still using PostGIS, even for the planet, and uh, we take uh, the, the, the time to wait a little bit longer until Postgres uh, has finished its implementations because it would take much more time to implement all those algorithms already available in PostGIS. So um, I will finish um, and uh, to, to, to thank the, this master thesis uh, and the student, uh, also to the team of my lab, to an intern from Singapore who also helped uh, to analyze uh, and, and reverse engineer Google, Google's implementation, and Jerry Clough, uh, a famous mapper from the UK. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stefan. So a little bit more time for questions because we can finish at 3.30 for coffee. So uh, first question. At the very back and then in the middle. Hi, I was just wondering, do you have a, like a compiled list of tags you used? that determine whether or not um, something, something's an AOI, OSM tags? A compiled list of the tag um, I use, of course. O of course, that's part of this uh, uh, web page um, I will show you. So if, if I start over the calculation, you see this is the list, the complete list of tags. That's what you're asking for? Yep. Yeah, that's the list. OK, cool. I mean, and in the implementation, uh, in the repository, in the GitHub repository, in the open source, it will be in the open source where you see it in the source. Thank you for the presentation. Um, what's the processing time, finally, when you are only using uh, PostGIS? Uh, you, you said you wanted to go distributed with uh, Spark to go uh, a few minutes computation, but I didn't get uh, how long it was uh, with just a relational database uh, framework. So you see now uh, um, an area of, of city of Zurich, which is not a big area, around Zoom level 14. Now I push the button and uh, it will take some minutes so you can observe. So it's some minutes for an area of few kilometers. It's around half an hour for Switzerland, an extra for whole Switzerland, and extrapolating this to the, to the whole world would mean, uh, I, I would say, a few hours. Yeah. So it's about one hour, sorry, for Switzerland, and, and, and about 45 minutes uh, is uh, just the network centrality algorithms, and only 15 minutes uh, all the processing within uh, PostGIS. For uh, Switzerland, um, uh, I think the result of this uh, is a um, set of polygons or, or kind of data set what you can use for visualization or analysis of, of locations. That's the right. uh, idea. Right. But uh, my, my question is, these algorithms uh, would they work even in the client side? I mean, I'm I already have my uh, vector tiles, for example, with the data on the browser. So could uh, this kind of three steps be done? Uh, in vector tile level, uh, dynamically live in uh, renderer in uh, mobile browser or, or web browser. This uh, algorithms don't require really global data. This local tiles already have everything what you need. It's available as GeoJSON. As uh, there are simply polygons, 
and uh, uh, the server side and those can be uh, mm -hmm. tiled, vector tiled. Yeah, the data processed and, and server side. The problem is that uh, if you process it, uh, it will be outdated right in the moment when you are starting to use. Uh, but if you have um, theoretically at least live uh, vector tiles, you don't need to transfer anything to the client extra or process anything on the server. You just take the same algorithms uh, implemented in JavaScript with uh, vector tiles. You have the point of interest data there already and uh, do it live on, uh, on JavaScript level okay. and client. Well, well, have you considered this scenario or this algorithms would say in principle work in very local, um, geographically local level with a, with a browser? It could be done on the fly, yes. But then you would need the whole, you know, the Python, all the dependencies. Uh, you know, you would need Post.js, which is probably already there. But you would need also this OSMX library and all these dependencies. Yes, you you could. Um, but well, uh, you will need to re-implement everything in JavaScript. But, uh, but level. I wouldn't do that. Uh, no, I wouldn't do that uh, if you zoom out. Um, yeah, uh, it would request whole Europe, and that would take. On, uh, for hours, uh, even on the fastest. Well, you uh, don't have points of interest in Europe and level in vector tiles anyway, so this kind of level disappears. But yes, there can be this kind of scalability issues in this uh, live um, live implementation of that. But yeah, yeah if I would, I, I'm thinking this data that's kind of uh, rendering um, help or kind of um, um, visualization technique of uh, points, really. So it could be done in, uh, in principle in, okay. in client. But in, in, in fact, the demand is also coming from environmental planners and, uh, and uh, allocation, location, allocation analysis. So I try another time here. And uh, they, are, they don't care about changes last, the last few weeks. They are, they are just interested in um, where are areas of high shopping activities. And they are uh, using this as another input to decide on a new location. And, uh, and, and, and for example, and also for touristic purposes, it is it's not, uh, there, I don't see a need yet to be really that up to date. Well, it, it matters if you have really live data. Like right now, there is a big concert somewhere. So it is kind of okay. active. Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to have one more question at the front here. And maybe this one. Yeah, thanks for your talk, Stefan. Uh, Google had uh, another approach than you with OpenStreetMap. Uh, did you compare the two, uh, if they are similar? Yes, as I said before, first we, we looked at Google uh, and tried to find out well, how, they, how they did. And then, and then I, I did a, a small um, ad hoc research to get with Jerry Clough, where he looked uh, at New York compared to this blog post. And it, it, it look, it, there are differences, and it's interesting that also Google sometimes is, is wrong when, when it uh, tagged uh, a Swiss bank back office area, a large area as area of interest, but it's also uh, only a back office area. And probably and, um, uh, um, my algorithm is a little bit too optimistic uh, and a little bit wrong in the rural uh, touristic areas, in the smaller ones. So we have to adapt the parameters, for example, of the DB scan algorithm. Yes. Um, in the beginning of the process, you have five different categories of AOIs, and after that, apparently, you, you merged them. But do you keep the initial information for whoever would be interested to see the interactions between the, the five categories? Once again, uh, the, the five the f categories? categories you have yes. uh, defining uh, the different uh, AOIs. Yes. And do you keep the information during the process for uh, whoever would be interested to to analyze the interaction between these categories? I, I'm not sure, sure if I understand you correctly because uh, um, when you look at these yes. uh, tags, um, I, I directly take these OSM tags and, uh, and, and use all those. Um, I did not make a mapping, also I already have made some, some, uh, some experiments to relate those to sightseeing or, or to shopping. So, so I, I could make this relationship, but I did not yet. Okay, because in the, the, um, the next maps you have uh, different colors. This one. Um, and uh, it next. was not me, me who differentiated it, it okay. was Avuxi. No, 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 uh, after that. <laughs> yes, and next one, <coughs> exactly. 
Wh which one? Previous one, the previous one with the colors. So apparently, in here you have different kind of uh, AOIs. These oh. colors just indicate that, uh, the, uh, I mean, that there are um, um, clusters, mm -hmm. and the color just indicates that cluster one, two, three, four, there are random okay. uh, colors. Mm. The, okay. There are just, uh, it's one category, and the, and, and the visualization just uh, cho has chosen mm. a random color for each different cluster. Okay, this is not different uh, statistical no, no, profiles? No. It's just okay. uh, making, to, to, visual to visualize the difference between each instance. Okay, we're going to have to close. That is definitely an area of interest, this uh, topic. So thank you for your attention and a round of applause for all of the speakers.